Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel. Um, I'm just chilling in a sweatshirt and basically night clothes. And I know, like, you know, YouTube, you kind of want to be, like, dressed up and looking nice and all that kind of jazz. But, um, hey, it's, like, almost 11 o'clock at night. And I felt like doing this video. And, yeah, no makeup and everything. But, hey, um, I wouldn't be myself. Oh, I'm scratching my eye because it just um i wouldn't be my real self if i was trying to just like dress up every single time don't get me wrong i love dressing up and love wearing makeup but um i hopefully sorry if my hearing aid is squeaking it it's really annoying and i can't always hear it but um i have to have it to hear i try to turn it down but yeah okay so um i'm going to try to do kind of like a morning routine video or vlog tomorrow or some sort of vlog if it's not just the morning routine um because i have to get up super early i can't make any promises because i really do want to vlog tomorrow regardless or put up a video but i'm gonna try my best so i don't want to promise you something that's that's not gonna happen but i also don't want to say i'm not gonna do it because i am going to try my best um just see how things kind of go around here because it might be a little crazy, um, you know, have to, like, have time to do celery juice and, like, get ready to do what we're doing early in the morning, which is gonna be awesome. And that's why I'm not saying, because I'm not, because I'm gonna try to vlog it, but if I don't, I'll definitely come talk about it. But, it'd be awesome to vlog some of it. Anyways, um, this video is, is actually, um, it is, if you don't know, um, there's a couple things that I learned um, and I remember it every year, but every year it relates to me. One of them, well, both of them kind of do one more than the other. Um, but so September, the month of September is actually, um, NICU Awareness Month. So NICU, um, Awareness Month. So if you had a baby or you were a baby that was born and had to be in the NICU, um, for some amount of time, um, then you know what I'm talking about. I was a preemie. Sorry, my arm is getting tired. Woo! I was a preemie. Um, so I was born a month early. Um, I was three pounds, 12 ounces. I was obviously in the NICU. I was a blue baby. Um, I had a lot of wires and tubes hooked up to me. I was born with a really bad heart and... At 20 days old, I had to get a blade lock shunt to basically keep me alive because I was too small for them to do the heart surgery. Um, but at about a year and a half old, I was able to get my open heart repaired, repaired open heart surgery for Tetralogy of Fallot. Um, they had to give me a lot of oxygen to my brain though because when I was born, I didn't have enough oxygen and so they had to do that. But the result of that is it burst in my retinas. So that caused me to have an eye condition called ROP, also known as retinopathy of prematurity. There are five stages of ROP, um, five being the most severe. I My retinas are detached. So I have stage five. Yes, I can see light and shadows and things and objects without um, extra detail. Um, I have to sometimes look diagonal because I can see more out of my right eye. If I were to be able to hold my eyes open, um, I would be able to see even more. But unfortunately, um, my muscles are too weak to stay open on their own. So I really don't get to do that. But that's okay. Um, I'm thankful for what I have and what I can't see. I do have glasses. I don't have them on right now because it's like 11 o'clock at night. And I do have to take breaks from them because it's really hard to wear them sometimes with my hearing aids. Um, you know, it's just kind of rough on the ears. Um, oh, speaking of that, <laughs> I'm also hearing impaired. Um, um, but I also have... Okay, I'm going to try to get this right because this is, this is a big one. I have moderate spastic hypertonic quadriplegic cerebral palsy. Um, basically I can walk, um, I can walk without assistance, I can walk without crutches, wheelchair, walker, on the same token, we do have crutches, um, I can walk, like, around house, around my house and stuff, 
But when I go to other people's houses, often I will take my crutches. Um, first of all, I'm not really familiar with their house, but secondly, it is important to do that because I never know what activities we're going to do. And my house is a little different. Um, now, there are certain days, like, if I literally, this doesn't happen very often, but if I don't feel well, like, my back is really stiff and it's hurting, um, then I will use my crutches around the house. But um, mostly I use my crutches when I go to other people's houses. Um, I don't usually use my walker or my wheelchair at other people's houses because I don't really need it because I can just chill on a couch. Um, but if we are planning to go to the mall or I'm going to, you know, be at a friend's house for a few weeks or, or a week or, um, or however long or we're going on a trip or we might go to the zoo or even the mall or even just on walks or places in general, just whatever, it doesn't matter. Then we will take either the special needs stroller or my wheelchair. I still will take my crutches, but um, got to have that. So why is that? Well, my body gets very stiff. And so long distance walking is not good for my body. I have had several conversations with my orthopedic doctor about this. Um, we've tried a lot of physical therapy and he just said, listen, um, the physical therapy actually is not working. But what is working is you using this equipment that I'm ordering for you and um, you're not over compromising your body. Therefore, you're not stuck in your wheelchair, but you need to use it when you need to use it. And so I'm, I'm going to need you to do that. And that was a very serious conversation. Like, um, it was quite emotional, but it, but it was good. It was good. Um, so speaking of that, so yeah, I do have a walker, a K walker. I have like a little K walker. So one that would like fit like a six year old. Like, I'm not even joking. You can go look at it. Um, there's like a, a tiny dance video I did on here from when I'm special with the special needs dancers. And you'll see it more because in performances, um, I'll have people film those as well but um sorry I have hiccups I'm like just ate macaroni and cheese from Chick-fil-a and mm, anyway um and I do we do have a special needs stroller um we actually got ours well there's another video on it but we got ours from the adaptive mall it's a special tomato jogger and um so we have that because it has a canopy on it um and it's good because it it um reclines back it's good for my back. The doctor said it's really good for my back. And um, if I were to have a seizure, um, it's actually a little safer than the wheelchair to um, handle in it. Um, uh, I haven't said anything about that yet. Sorry. Anyways, I'm, I'll get there. Um, but if I, um, so, but we choose where we want to take the stroller and where we want to take the wheelchair. It, it, it doesn't really matter. Like if we know we're going to go and be in the hot sun all day, then we're going to take the stroller. Um, but you know, and, and honestly for me, it depends on who's pushing me. I like both. It doesn't bother me either one because ultimately my body is not being compromised. So if it's easier for one person to push my chair and another person to push my stroller, then I'm good. I'm good. Um, so yes, I do have epilepsy. I do have seizures. I have actually baby seizures, and this is really rare, but I am an adult. I'm a little person. I'm 33 years old, but I do have infant seizures, and I am on treatment that an infant would be on. That's all I'm going to say about the treatment, but I am on that treatment that babies are on. Um, so my seizures are not adult seizures. However, um, they are what they are, and you, we got to be careful with those. I have staring seizures, um, temporal lobe epilepsy, can have myoclonic seizures, and I also have hyperecplexia, which basically is, I know, I have a lot of things. Hi, guys! How you doing? It's Ashley Nicole. Um, I would be lying if I said I had nothing. Anyway, <laughs> um, but I have, um, so basically hyperecplexia is, um, sensitivity to certain things like cold, um, certain textures. Um, like if you hear like a bang noise and it scares you, it might scare you for literally 10 seconds. For me, my heart's pounding for like two minutes. Um, you can look that up. Hyper, EK, plexia. There are three different words. A neurologist uh, found that out after doing an e e a sleep deprived EEG for me. Um, I have the best pediatric neurologist. I have really good doctors, really good doctors. Um, I 
have, um, I know this is a repeat, but for those of you who are new to the channel or you might have forgotten, um, and I also have sensory processing. So like certain textures like Jello, love the taste, hate the texture. <sighs> um, love sand, like sand in a beach. I could play with it all day long. Uh, love Play-Doh, hate clay. Don't know what it is about clay. Um, but the texture of clay just, ugh. Um, certain like blue jeans, I don't like the texture of. Certain, just certain things like that. Um, and really, really, really loud noises. So I have noise cancellation headphones for when I need them or I, um, that's another thing, like if we go somewhere loud and we have the stroller, we can pull over the canopy and it calms me down right away. Don't know what it is, but it does. Um, I am a little person, actually technically an LP, so I weigh 70 pounds and I am four foot seven. Um, I do sit in a booster seat in the car. I'm supposed to most of the time. Um, number one for safety and number two for my posture, because of my cerebral palsy, um, my back and things can get really stiff and hurt and stuff and so it keeps my posture aligned um and um i also sleep in i'll just show you um my bed's not made right now sorry i just showed you the wall because i didn't mean to do that see when you're blind and you film you kind of sometimes run into things prime example you guys i mean i'm not gonna like hide it from you because it is what it is like why do that? I'm not going to do that. Um, so, my bed's not made right now because I'm getting ready to go to bed. Um, yeah, I sleep in a toddler crib. Um, why? Not just because I'm a little person, but because I, uh, well, that's one reason, but also it's safe. It's just safer because I've been known to sleepwalk at night. It's not every single night, but it's hard to predict. Um... I, um, if I have a seizure, I'm not going to fall far from the <laughs> bed to the ground, so it won't be unsafe because it's carpeted. And number three, um, reason is if I happen, I can't actually roll out of bed. Like sometimes I, I used to roll out of bed a lot with or without a seizure. So it's hard to know at night because I can have silent, um, seizures in my sleep. We may be getting a seizure watch eventually, not really sure. Um, so thinking about that one, um, doctor said he will write a prescription for it, but, uh, I'm just still thinking about it, um, cause it's like a million dollars, not really, but, um, you know, when the time is right, it'll happen. Um, but yeah, so basically I was one of those babies that, um, was in the hospital for quite a while when I was born and, um, we were told, um... My parents actually were told that right before I got my open heart surgery that um, there was a 50-50 chance <coughs> I would make it, um, but um, I did. Um, have we been told several times, even throughout my life, especially as I got older, um, that it's actually a miracle that I'm still alive today um, because oftentimes... Sorry, I have allergies and my ear keeps popping. Ah! <clears throat> um, oftentimes, when you have tetralogy, um, you have to get a second surgery by the teenage years, um, if not even 20, but you're lucky to get past 15 and not have to get this um, without symptoms. Um, and so that would be putting in a second pulmonary valve. Um, you have shortness of breath, you have arrhythmias, abnormal arrhythmias. Um, you can be extra tired, which I have other conditions that make me tired. So we always check my heart and it's looking good right now. Um, so far what we know. I'll give more information when we find out more about that stuff. But right now we're going to go with we're looking good because we are, we're looking good. Um, but before I got my open heart surgery, I was on medicine. I don't know what it was, but I was on medicine, um, when I was a teeny tiny baby. And a lot of times, you know, people will think, why do blind people have such horrible teeth or whatever? I'm just gonna, I am getting dental work done. I am, but, 
I have to be honest with you, um, because of the medicine, it, it really messed up my teeth. Like, just, it just did. Um, there's nothing we can do about that. Even every dentist has said that. It's been proven. It's okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get them pretty soon. Okay? It's gonna happen. Um, because I brush my teeth, like, all the time. All the time. Anyway, um, and then, um, so as you can see... 33 years later, I'm doing great. I'm doing wonderful. Yeah, sure, I have struggles, um, you know, throughout the days, but it, it's nothing that I can't handle, you know? Like, um, I'm alive, I'm well, I have amazing friends, amazing family, an amazing support system, and um, I couldn't have asked for a better one. I really could not have. So, um, if you were a baby who was in the NICU or you have or have had a child who has been in the NICU then feel free to comment down below and subscribe and all that kind of jazz would love to have you along and um thank you for watching this video hope you enjoyed it love you guys and talk to you later